<laughs> Life with the world's greatest detective is just one piece of excitement after another. Not a day goes by without some adventure or another taking place. Sometimes I'm simply left dizzy by the sheer pace of events in my crowded life. Watson, do stop muttering now. Have you or have you not got Mrs. Drip, the shower curtain fitter's wife? No, I haven't, Holmes. Sorry. Now then, have you got Mr. Pew, the flower arranger? Mm, yes. And uh, Master Pew, the flower arranger's son? Yes. Oh, I'm bored. Bored, bored, bored. Well, would you like to see my mind-reading toilet seat? That'll entertain you. I beg your pardon? My Colonel Cozy Fitz, marvellous mind-reading toilet seat. All you ever think about is toilets, Watson. You really do lower the tone of this period drama. It's made of Canadian maple. I bought it at the wooden tree shop. they got branches everywhere. Very funny, Watson. All right, if it's a mind-reading toilet seat, tell me what I'm thinking now. Um, you're thinking what a stupid twit Watson is. Well, anyone talking to you would think that, wouldn't they? It worked in the shop, Holmes. I think you and your Canadian maple toilet seat are barking up the wrong tree, mate. Unless something exciting happens, or I start winning and happy families, there's going to be no adventure this week, is there? And when you're a super sleuth like me, that would never do, Watson. Ah, now that's more like it. <laughs> Hello, headquarters of the greatest detective the world has ever known. Yeah. No, not Bergerac, mate. Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. What? Oh. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Well, that's more like it. Yes, of course, mate. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yes. Right. We'll see you later, then. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Well, Watson, looks like we've got something interesting to do this evening. Why, Holmes? We're going to the theatre, and it's not to see the mousetrap. Ladies and gentlemen, for your delectation and delight. Ooh. The delicious, the de lovely, the most dexterous damsel of the delicate art of aquatic dexterity. Ooh. Madame Irene Wilson and her incredible performing goldfish. Oh, good evening, good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry I don't look too good tonight, but I'm feeling a bit of colour. So I went to the doctors. I said, Doctor. To doctor, I feel like a pair of old curtains. He said, pull yourself together. <laughs> so I said to the doctor, I keep thinking I'm a dog. He said, come and lie down on the couch. I said, I can't. I'm not allowed on the couch. Mm -hmm. Oh, but seriously, ladies and gentlemen, seriously, tonight you are going to witness the most amazing stunt ever seen in the theatre. Tonight, at my command, my goldfish here will leap into the air, do a backflip through this hoop, and land in this bowl over there. Oh. My show, could I have a drum roll, please? <laughs> well, I don't think much of her, eh, right, Watson? I could do better than that. But this is British variety at its best, Holmes. Variety? What sort of variety do you get from watching a fish swim round in a bowl? Whoever said variety was dead was right. So shut your big fat gobs! Oh, but ladies and gentlemen, before your very eyes, my goldfish here will perform a little ditty entitled I've got a lovely tank of fish food, so come on everybody, all together! I've got a lovely tank of fish food. Lovely. Ooh, Mr. Holmes, thank goodness you've arrived. Come in, come in. I'm David Sloth, the theatre manager. Did you enjoy the show? Um, no, we didn't, Mr. Spit. And I happen to be Sherlock Holmes, not him. Um, I'm Dr. Watson. I must say, I thoroughly enjoyed the show. Shut up, crawler. What's all that paperwork? That looks highly suspicious to me. They're bills. Hello, 
Great to hear it. There you go, Bill. <laughs> he gets a lot of fan mail. He runs the ticket office, see? He's very popular. Crowds love him. They hate the show, but they love him. Fascinating. Now then, my good man, tell us what's been going on in this theatrical establishment. Well, it all started with mysterious accidents. Lights would fall from above, almost hitting people below. Trap doors would open unexpectedly during the shows. Oh, it's been chaos and mayhem from curtain up to curtain down. <laughs> Sounds like an Andrew Lloyd Webber musical, doesn't it, Watson? <laughs> My most popular act, Wilson the Canary Trainer, Irene's father, disappeared last week, and all that was left was a pile of feathers on the floor. Well, this is very suspicious, but I believe I know the answer to this riddle. I deduce that you killed Wilson in a fit of rage and hastily buried his body in the soft banks along the side of the Thames, thus accounting for these muddy, wet footprints on the floor of your office, leading directly to your desk, Mr. Splat. So, what have you got to say to that, eh? My name's Splot, and I've just come in from watering my leeks. <laughs> That's what they all say. But it's true. Perhaps we should question Wilson's daughter, Irene. Don't call me Irene in public, Watson. It's not good for business. Anyway, I've a better idea. We'll question Wilson's daughter instead. Right, Spock? Where will we find her? In her dressing room. Come on, Watson, get your skates on. We must find this Irene Wilson woman before she vanishes too. love. Did we interrupt you doing your ironing? You aren't uh, Irene Wilson by any chance, are you? I am. Who are you? Well, don't you know who I am? No. I'm the world-famous detective Sherlock Holmes, and I have a warrant here for your arrest. <laughs> I demand to know your charges. £200 an hour, 60 quid for voiceover work, and 25 quid for public appearances. <laughs> what are you accusing me of? The murder of your father, unless you have a witness who can prove otherwise. I could never have murdered my father. I was with my dresser all the time. And who is this dresser? Daffith Splot, the theatre manager. Ah, so you've got a Welsh dresser, have you? <laughs> That's a good one, eh, Watson? <laughs> I might have had my disagreements with my father, but I could never have killed him. I wanted to be a great dramatic actress, but father wanted me to stay in variety, so I was forced to join him in his canaries. But the show's got less and less popular. And Father spent less and less time with me. And more and more time with his canaries. Could it be Keith Harris, Holmes? Don't be stupid, Watson. He died years ago. Carry on, love. Father started to breed a super canary to liven up the act. But I fear the worst. I think he succeeded in breeding a canary so large it ate him. Well, nothing succeeds like a six-foot canary, eh? <laughs> uh... Scream! And it came from the stage, Holmes! Someone is in mortal danger! All right, don't panic, Watson. This is a time for call out of leadership and heroism. Um, where can we hide, love? <laughs> Me lovely flowing feather bow is trapped under this horrible big weight. I feel like Isadora Duncan. <laughs> well, my good woman, what happened? <laughs> What happened? Well, I was in the middle of me big number. Let's all go down the strand. Let's all go down the strand. Have a banana. Yes, all right, love. Get on with it. Well, suddenly, out of the blue, voila! <laughs> oh, that dirty great thing lands beside me. I shouts out the immortal line from Hamlet. Oi, careful with that thing. Then I fainted. Oh, well, this looks like the work of some truly enormous Goliath, oh. don't it? Even I couldn't shift that weight, and I'm Sherlock Holmes. Oh, yeah. dear. Therefore, I deduce that a pair of scissors would come in handy here. Oh. Yeah. Here we go. Oh. 
That's so that little problem, eh, love? Oh, here, the great Mary Lloyd gave me this scarf. <laughs> Never liked her. Well, as Romeo said to Juliet in the famous balcony scene from The Importance of Being Earnest, Thanks, mate. I thought I was a goner a minute back there. Oh, you should have seen my... Yes, Juliet. all right. Shut up, love. Oh. Holmes, Holmes, look. On the floor. Feathers. Canary feathers, I'll be bound. The culprit must be the super canary that Wilson bred. Come on, Holmes. We must capture him immediately. <laughs> Watson, that was my line. I'm meant to be solving the crime, not you. That's not fair. I'm Sherlock Holmes, not you. Come here. <laughs> Bill, how's business? Terrible. How many tickets have we sold? Zero. Oh, well, it's better than nothing, I suppose. I'm going to water my leaks. Well, that won't help the bookings, will it, Mr. Splot? Oh, hello. Here's a pretty boy. Hand over your money or you'll get it. Are you with Paul Daniels? No. You'll have to buy a ticket, then. But this is a robbery, stupid. You still have to buy a ticket. Oh, all right. How much? Three shillings and sixpence. But seeing as you're a canary, four and six. There you go. Ta! Now, hand over all your cash. But we've only got four and six. That'll do. Hey. Ah, fooled you. I don't think you've heard the last of me. I shall be back to ruin your next show. <laughs> I hate budgies. <laughs> Where is everyone when you want them? Um, a super sleuth like me should not have to hang around. May I take this opportunity to demonstrate my amazing mind-reading toilet seat, Holmes? Later, Watson, later. Look at the state of you wearing that thing. Put it away. You're determined to ruin my upmarket image. Sorry, Holmes. Oh, Mr. Holmes, Mr. Holmes, I... terrible news. What, don't tell me the two Ronnies have been repeated again. <laughs> no, worse than that. What, they've come out of retirement? No. A giant canary has just robbed the ticket office and David, the theatre manager, is missing. One minute he was in his garden having a leak and the next minute he was gone. And all that was left was this pile of feathers and a note. Oh, let's have a look. <laughs> um, read other side. Ooh. Well, this must be some sort of cryptic cipher, Watson. Yeah. I wonder if I can decode it. <laughs> um... Perhaps it means read the other side, Holmes. <laughs> well, that's a novel interpretation, Watson. But this time I'm prepared to give you the benefit of the doubt. Now, what's this say? It's signed, The Extremely Large Killer Canary. <gasps> Beware, anyone who goes on stage tonight will die. Oh. You better not go on stage then, Miss Wilson. Rubbish, Watson. She's used to dying on stage. She does it every night. That's not quite true, Mr. Holmes. I had a very successful season in Skegness in 1879. All right, love. The show must go on. We actors never miss a performance. We actors? Watson, I have always been a supreme actor, gifted with a love of drama and born with an uncanny ability for, um... 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 Learning words? Yeah, exactly, love. What are you suggesting, Mr. Holmes? I shall join you on stage tonight, madam, and protect you from this evil killer canary. Yeah. Oh, good evening, good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry I don't look too good tonight, but I'm feeling a bit off colour. So I went to the doctor. Beautiful assistant to the amazing Irene Wilson. <laughs> what a start to my glorious stage career. But you always wanted to be on stage, Holmes. Yeah, but not in a dress, Watson. I thought you liked wearing a dress. You shouldn't listen to malicious gossip, Watson. Sorry, Cheryl. And now, my beautiful assistant, Cheryl, will bring on the hoop. <laughs> Here we go, Watson. Break a leg, Holmes. I'll break yours if you don't shut your face. Thank you, friends. Thank you. Yes. Humble as my role is, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Seems only yesterday that I played third spear bearer to Sir John Feelgood's Hamlet. <laughs> I remember so very well saying to him, Johnny, Johnny, I said, that wig you're wearing. Well, it's as bad as Frank. <laughs>
What did you yank me back for? I had the audience in the palm of my hand then. I thought you should carry this. Then you'd be able to read the mind of the canary should he appear. What a load of old rubbish. Still, if it'll keep you quiet, just listen to them out there, Watson. Oh, they love me. This is what it's all about. The roar of the grease paint, smell of the crowd, even though there's only three people in. <laughs> Romans, rat fans, I come to bury variety, not to mourn it. <laughs> <laughs> Only the other day I was recalling me years in rap, touring the country with Larry, Johnny, Pepsi and Shirley. <laughs> and as I said to Johnny, make your mind <laughs> up, lovey, either you dress up as a hamster or leave the show. <laughs> 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 Not too bad, considering I just had a 20-stone canary fall on me head. You were lucky to escape with so little damage. It wasn't luck, love. It was thanks to Watson's mind-reading toilet seat, which helped me to read the villain's mind. And at the last minute, I dodged the hundred-ton weight. Yeah. But I pulled you back, Holmes. Rubbish. This was a case of my name and matter, Watson. But what about the canary? I don't think it is a canary, Holmes. Exactly, Watson. I deduced from the colour of the feathers that they are from a chaffinch from Merthyr Tidville. And notice the way he's sitting, Watson. A popular position used by the Druids and reenacted at the last I Stedford in Bangor in 1884. Oh, yes, there is no doubt about it. This canary is no other than Mr David Spratt, the theatre manager. Let's take a look. Father! Father? Father? Oh, well, all right. So I was wrong about the Chaffinch and Merthyr Tidville, but I bet he's been to an R. Stedford. Yeah. Irene, I can explain everything. And so Wilson explained what with the pressure of being booed off stage every night and his daughter wanting to leave the act, it all became too much for him. So he disguised himself as a giant canary to take revenge on the theatrical world. This included tying up the theatre manager and leaving him in the leak patch where we found him. Unfortunately, being a canary went to Wilson's head, and once he started, he couldn't stop. That was until the great Sherlock Holmes stopped him. As for Holmes, he decided to embark on a new career. Ladies and gentlemen, before your very eyes, using the wonders of my mind-reading toilet seat, I can now tell you, sir, that the card you're holding up is the Eight of Hearts. You're wrong, mate. Um, Ten of Diamonds? Wrong. Um, well, is it the Jack of Spades, then? No, hang on a minute. It's the uh, Three of Hearts, isn't it? No, 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 no. Be fair, it's the Four. Four of Hearts. Oh, I don't know. You're looking a bit flushed, aren't you, mate? Well, this is my new career going down the drain here. Oh, I knew I should have stuck to detective work. <laughs> 